Okay guys, welcome back to episode 5 of our Angry B Angry Zombies series. Um, in this episode we're just going to be carrying on with our explosions. We're going to carry on trying to get those things to work. And then we'll probably also start working on loading in some new levels once all the zombies in the current level have been destroyed. So if you're new here, my name is Gino and we create awesome games on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you like these videos, please go ahead and like them, it helps a lot. Uh, so in this video, let's go ahead and start. So let us have a look at our, our what's it called, our project plan. So in episode 5, we are going to be working on loading new levels and fixing our explosions. So that shouldn't take too long because I have an idea of how to fix them. So we'll go see if that works. So. Um, in a few, I think, when, what episode was it? I think it was episode 2 maybe? Episode 2 or 3 we, we created our camera movement so that when we launch our skulls the camera follows follows the skulls uh, and, and in that episode we, we didn't really like or at least I didn't really like the movement of the camera but now that we've um, added in some more features to the game and we've added in our background and also our, our colliders to our ground our camera actually looks quite good so we're just going to leave that for now and we're going to go ahead and remove this and then we'll see at the end of the project if we still want to go ahead and change it but for now we'll go ahead and scrap that idea we'll leave the camera how it is at the moment and we will focus on our explosion so let's go ahead and fix our explosion so I have opened up Unity just to save us some time again so let us play our game quick and see what, what's happening so this is from where we left off yesterday's so if we launch our skull, we can see that we can collide with everything and if we collide, if anything or any of the objects hits our zombie, they get destroyed. So that looks good. So now what we're going to do is we want to work on destroying our TNT blocks and when we destroy them, we also want to play like an explosion animation. So to do that, we are first of all going to go ahead and delete our TNT explosion because that's what we created yesterday but it didn't really work so we'll go ahead and delete that and then we'll open up our TNT prefab and let us create a new explosion from scratch so we'll call this one explosion and we'll go ahead and put this in our animations let's just make sure this is in the right one project zombies animations okay so cool so we'll go ahead and save our explosions animation in our animation folder in our project zombies folder so that's fine now we need to go to our angry zombies folder and look for our explosions there they are so we need to just drag and drop in all our individual sprites into the animation pane and we'll spread that out a bit just so it doesn't look too quick so we could probably spread that out a little bit more maybe let's try one second what does that look like it's a bit too slow let's make it about 0.4 maybe we'll see what that looks like um, in gameplay so that's it for that so if we go back to our scene um, and let us first of all let's go to our animator and in our animator we will click on our where is it? Um, two seconds, where it is the TNT. Okay, so this should come up if we click on our where is it? not that one. Okay, so it's not an angry zone here yeah, in our TNT, there we go. So in under our um, animations folder, click on TNT or not TNT sorry, on our explosion animation. So here you can see when we start the game, um, we go from entry straight onto our explosion. So that's not really what we want. So if we play our game, we should see if this works properly that our our TNT blocks are exploding, which they're not. Okay. Anyway, they should be. But let's go ahead and fix this. So if we go ahead and click on our explosions again, select the animator tab. We, what we want to do is we want to create an empty state, and we will go ahead and call this default and we also want to go ahead and set this default uh, state to we want to set it as our default state so as soon as we enter the game it goes into this default state and then what we want to do next is from our 
default state, we want to make a transition into our explosion state, and we want to set this. We want to remove the has exit time, and we also want to change the transition duration to zero. And then what we want to do next is we need to add in a condition. So in our, under our parameters here, let's go ahead and add in a boolean, and we'll call this hit. We will not set that as true at the moment because we only want to set it as true when we collide with it. So let's go back to that and let's add in a condition. So whenever our hit is true, we're going to head, we're going to transition to the explosion state. And then the same thing, let's go ahead and make a transi transition back. But it, and we want to do the opposite now. So let's go ahead and make our transition duration zero. And we want to change our condition from hit is equal to true we want to change that to false so whenever whenever we go from from our default state into our explosion state we want to hit we want to make hit true uh, and then we, when we go back from our explosion state into our default state we want to make our hit equal to false so we'll go ahead and save that so that should be fine so let's go back into our scene so let's go ahead and play a game and just see if everything works so this shouldn't change anything so if we okay Anyway, so that's fine. Everything's still working, so let's now try and get our explosions to work. So, what we want to do is let's go ahead and open our explode script. Okay, so here it is. So, this is where we left off yesterday. So, the mistake that we were doing yesterday was we were actually using our on collision enter 2D, which we don't really want to do. What we want to do is we want to go and say private uh, void on trigger enter 2D. And then in here, what we want to do is we want to go onto our animator, and we want to say animator dot uh, set boolean. Uh, we want to set our hit boolean to true. We'll save that. So that's all we need to do in here. And then if we go back to Unity in the inspector, we want to wait for this to load up quick. Then let's go to our TNT block and on our box collider make sure that there is triggered um saving fail check for someone. Okay. Interesting. Okay, let's just go ahead and remove that. And then we'll go ahead and add it again to explode like that. So that's fine. Okay, so on our box collider. Uh, let's make sure you uh, select is triggered to be equals to true so go ahead and tick that box and then I don't know what happened but it got rid of our animator so let's go and add an animation our animator so remove that try this again animator over there then we can go ahead and drag in our animator into our animator field on our explode script just like that so now let us play our game so as soon as we play our game let's see we go into our scene so our TNT blocks are not exploding so that's fine so if we go and why is this zoomed in so let's go and launch that okay let's just try this again I don't know why it's zoomed in so much into our skull which is very very strange let's have a look and see our camera Well, let's just play this and maybe we need to change our camera values. Okay, we'll leave that at like that. So 0 0.7 and 5. Let's go and change that 5 and 0 0.7. Minus 20. So if we play this. And when she plays, okay, that looks a little bit better. I don't know why. Ah, oh, what am I doing? Okay, so let's go back and revert all of those values. And then all we need to do is zoom out because I don't know why we zoomed out in on our gameplay. So that's fine. Silly mistake for me. I apologize. But if we play our game now, you can see that everything's working. Now we're just going to go ahead and move our TNT blocks um, just to the beginning of the scene so that we don't spend forever trying to collide with them so let's just put them over here 
So if we play our game now, hopefully when we collide with these TNT blocks, they will play an explosion. Okay, let's let's see what's happening. So animator is not playing an animator control. Let's see what is happening here. Okay, so let's play our game and then we'll go into our animator tab. And we'll see what state we're in. Okay, so we are going from... We're actually in neither of them. So if we play that... So let's see, our uh, version cannot preview transition. Did save this, we, yeah, we did. Okay, let's have a look quickly. So that's fine. One trigger anti 2D, which is fine. Let's just go and see if we set this. Okay, so hit is fine. This should work because I did it like a few a few hours ago just to make sure it does work. So our explosion stage works. Um, where is this? Let's go ahead to our scene. Let's go to our prefab rather. And let's just delete these gain. Then start it from scratch because it should work. So we'll add in our animator, which is fine. That seems to be fine. Okay, and then we want to add in our explode script. And then we can drag in our animator into our explode script. So that's fine. Now if we play our game, let's see, do we get any errors? We don't get any errors and if we try and collide with them. So let's let's just what is it? Explode on line twelve. So why don't we just uh, Google this quick? So let us say um, animator is not playing. So this is I'm just looking it up quick. Animator is not playing. Animator. Before. Um. Okay, so it looks like the animation controller is disabled. So we'll click on here and let's see animation controller. Okay, so first of all, let's just go and delete this quick and then 
We'll have to do this again because clearly this is not working. So delete that. Go and delete that as well. And then we will just create a new animation quick. So I think this should work now. So let's go project zombies animations and then we'll go call this explode. Like that, okay. And then let's just go ahead and drag in our, our sprites again. So under art and then explosion sheet. Like that, drag those in. We'll expand them a little bit to 0.4. So that explodes. Okay, and then okay, so now we've got a controller in this, and we'll drag in our animator into there. So now, surely, if we play this, we should get an explosion when we collide with them. So let's go and try that. Okay, so they are playing, which is better, but they are playing even though we didn't collide with them so let us well first of all let's just maybe they collide with the floor let's see if we go back to our scene let's go to scene and we will select all our tnt blocks let's just move them up a bit we'll play and then let's just go to or we'll stay on our scene scene view let's see what happens okay so they are playing um, all the time. So let's see, animator um, parameters. Okay, I, that's why. So we need to do this again. So if, let's go ahead and create an empty state again. We'll name it um, default. And then we will set this as our default state. And then we'll go ahead and make a transi transition to our explode state. And for that, we want to add a parameter of a boolean, and we'll call this hit. So in our conditions, we'll add this hit boolean. We'll take out the extra time and set the transition duration to zero. Then we'll do the same going back to our default state. We will make a transition, get rid of the extra time, and set the transition duration to zero. We'll add in a condition of our hit being false, and then we'll go ahead and save that. So now if we play our game, we should only play that animation when we so when we collide with them, so they they have they're not playing now, so if we go ahead and launch our object and we go through them, they start playing, so that's good, that's what we want. But now we don't want them to play forever. We're gonna go ahead and play for like a few seconds or maybe even less than one second. So let us try and figure out what we wanna do there. So for this we'll go ahead and say We'll go and make a neck uh, a second function. We'll call this private private void. Um, what do we call this? Destroy destroy animation. And then in here we'll say destroy um, game object. So we'll go ahead and destroy the TNT block. Otherwise, if we just stop playing the animation, the TNT block will appear back in the scene. So we'll go ahead and destroy the 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 game object, but then before that, what we want to do is we want to go and say animator dot set boolean of our hit it needs to be a capital so it knows which one we're talking about, and we'll set that to false. Spell it correctly. So just like that. And then what we want to do in our on trigger enter after a, a few seconds, we want to call this destroy animation function. So let's go and say invoke with the name of um, destroy animation. And then let us say after maybe 0 0.8 seconds. So hopefully that will look good. So let's save that and go back to our game and we'll go ahead and play this. So if we play that and we collide with our objects, okay so they play and then they get destroyed so that's perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. So now, um, well I think that's it for our that is it for our explosion. So let's see what else is next. So let's go ahead and go out of game mode. 
and then let us go here and see okay so we fixed our explosions and now we want to load in some new levels so let us first of all let's go create a simple second level so what we want to do is we want to uh, let's just create an empty object quick and we'll say level 2 and then let us drag in some of our prefab so we, what, what do we want we want some with our wood so we want a vertical wood uh, let's see when you go into our scene view that's why we can drag it in so we'll just go ahead and create a second level here just for now and then we'll go and take it out of the scene so we'll, pr we'll just create a simple one uh, just probably just with wood uh, where is our vertical wood? Uh, okay, so we don't we don't have vertical wood. So let us just uh, copy this and we'll paste it, and then we'll just rotate this on the z-axis, 90 degrees. We'll paste this over here, probably. And then we'll paste another one over there. Just like that so they don't fall. And then we'll do the same thing. Copy and paste. And then copy and paste again. You can be creative how, however creative you want and make this look however you want it to look. I'm just going to make something simple uh, just to try and get things working. So let's put that there. This hip there. And then what we'll do is we'll copy this guy, move it up a bit. And the same with, with this one. Copy and paste, move it up. Okay, so that's fine. That will be our level two, and then we need to add in some, some what is it? Let's add in some TNT blocks. Okay, that's a bit too big. So we'll go and make this. I think it was 0.3 by 0.3, and then we can put it in here. We'll copy and paste it and put it in there as well. And then we also want a zombie in here. So let us put a zombie over there. We'll make our zombie a little bit smaller, so let's say 0 0.8 maybe by 0 0.8. So that's fine. And then what we want to do after that is nothing actually. So we'll go ahead and save this as our level 2 by dragging it into our prefab folder. And in our prefab folder we'll just create another folder and call that levels and then we will drag in our two levels into there let's go ahead and delete our second level from our scene okay first of all we need to drag our zombie into our level two and then we'll go ahead and apply all overrides and then we'll delete that out of scene again so let's just make sure that worked drag in our level two so, okay, our zombie is not on there. Where is our zombie? Okay, clearly that didn't work. So let's just go ahead and drag in our zombie again. We'll put it over there. And then we'll drag him in there. Like that, okay. Clearly that doesn't work. So I guess we do this again. Let's delete that zombie. And then we'll open our level 2 prefab. Drag in a zombie, put it over there. Uh, so the size changed. Okay, so that's fine. So that should be fine. So now when, there it is. So if we delete our level two and we drag it in again, don't know why. Okay, so our zombie is there. So that's fine. Okay, so what we want to do next is well, let's go back to our scene over here. And we will go ahead and put our TNT blocks from our first level back to where they 
where they originally were because we now that we know that they work, that's fine, we can go and put them back. Okay, so that's fine. So that's level one done. And then now we need to figure out a way to load in our new new levels. So we'll change this zombie to the same size as the other one just so it looks the same. Okay, cool. So let's just go ahead and play the game and see if everything's still working now that we've changed a few things. Okay, so launch out. Okay, so that's working. That's fine. Cool. First of all, I just want to get rid of that debug. That debug message because it's annoying. We don't really need it anymore. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And then now we want to create another script. And in the script, let us call it. Well, first of all, we need to find where we're saving and seeing. So here in our script folder, let's create another script. C sharp script, and we'll call this game manager. Then we will go ahead and open it. So open that. Okay, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and create another empty object. And we'll call this game manager. We'll add in our script to it. So game manager. We'll save that. And then in here, what we want to do is we want to create a let's say an, an array to add in all of our all of our different levels so that once we've uh, killed our two zombies in our first level we can just add our second or we can remove the first level and add in a second level so let's see how we want to do this we're going to create an array of I think it is so let's go and create well first of all let's make this a serializable field so we can drag in our levels and we'll call this transform we'll make it of type transform and we will call it what are we loading in levels so let's go levels quite simple and then also I'm going to make this an array so that we can drag in as many as we want but for our game we're just going to drag in two Okay, and then well, let's go ahead and drag in those guys first. So, did we save it? We did. So now we should be able to create an array of two. So, size two. So expand that, and let's go and drag in our first level. So, level one and level two. Not like that. Take them. Take that out, and then drag in level two like this. What, what's the time on the stream? So half an hour. Okay, so we're nearly done. So let us try and uh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're at the beginning of the whenever we start playing the game, we're going to we're just going to spawn in a level. So in this case, we'll spawn in the first level. So we'll, let's go ahead and delete our first level, and we will create an empty object, and we'll call level position and for this we will go and put it over here somewhere and what we want to do with that is let us go and add a new tag and we'll call this one level position just like the name so we'll go ahead and add that tag on there and we're going to use this empty object as a reference to where we want to spawn or instantiate the new level so let's see if that's in the right place. So let us go. In our game manager, we'll call this a, or first of all, we'll say serialized field so you can access it. And then game object. Game object. And we'll go um, level. Level position. And then we will save that, drag this into our game manager. So now we've got reference to this 
this level position we can go and instantiate a level at that position so at on the start we will go and say um, instantiate in let's try this instantiate um, levels at zero and we want to say level position or level position dot quaternion dot identity so hopefully that will allow us to instantiate our level at there so let's see what's wrong here dot transform dot position so hopefully that allows us to put that like that okay so that looks good so let's go ahead and play this and see if our first level appears at this location so if we play this hopefully we get a, a level over here somewhere so let's see okay so there is our level but it's been a bit weird let's have a look okay so where's our zombie first of all Oh, let's just do this. We'll move this guy up, and then we'll restart. We'll, we'll move our level up and see what happens, because I think things are falling down. So let's see. You know, scene. Okay. So that's not really working how I wanted it to. Okay, we we'll, might have to figure out a different way to do this, but let's go ahead and unpause that and we'll go back to this, let's try our second level, maybe maybe it's just the way we set up our first level, hopefully, and then we can go ahead and change that if it is. So if we play our game and we click on our scene again. Oh, sorry, this needs to be one because we only have two two items in our array. So let's go ahead and play that again. So if we Okay, so that is there, but where's our zombie gone now? So let's see. We still don't have a zombie in our, in our level. What is happening to our level 2? So let's go back to level 2. And our zombie is there. So if we play our game again. Or is our zombie getting destroyed when we instantiate the level? So our zombie. Okay, that's level 2. So let's go level 2. Alright, so our zombie and our TNT blocks are getting destroyed. So we try and figure out why why that is. I suppose we already know because when you collide with something, um, they obviously get destroyed, TNT blocks as well as the zombies. So we probably need to add some sort of restriction onto it. But we need to figure that out because we don't really know how or what restriction to add onto it. So let's think about this. So let's go back into here. Maybe if we first of all, what is this? So we didn't see in our game view. Let's just see something quick. Our level position is at 15. Yeah. Okay, so that's at the same place. But yeah, that's all the way down there. And that's all the way over there. So maybe if we go, instead of position, we go local position. And then we go and replay our game. Hopefully we, well, hopefully our level doesn't spawn at the end of 
Okay, it does. So you can see there that our zombie does spawn, and so do our TNT blocks, but they, um, they, what's it called? They explode because they collide with something. So let's play that again just to show you. So we'll click on our scene pick. So there they are. They f everything falls down, including our zombie. Um, Okay, so we need to try and figure out why, or not why, but how to fix it. In terms of when we spawn a new level, we want to um, not destroy anything. Maybe if we let's have a look at our where we're destroying our zombie. So on collision, enter destroy zombie after two seconds. Okay. Maybe we can maybe we can add a rule in our game saying if only only destroy the zombie or the, or the TNT blocks if a skull crashes into it, which will kind of make our game a little bit harder. Let's try that. So if we go out of this and let's say in here, first of all, let's go to our skull and see do we have a skull tag on it? Yeah, we do. So that's fine, that'll work nicely. So on collision enter, for our zombie we want to say if um, collision dot game object dot tag is equal to what is it, skull. Then we can go ahead and destroy our zombie. And the same thing for our uh, what is it, explosion. If our collision dot game object dot tag is equal to skull, then we can do we can explode the TNT blocks. So let's see how, let's have a look at this and see what the hell that looks like. If it works. So let's go play that. So our scene, okay, so let's go back to our scene. Okay, so that that's fine. But clearly this is not working properly, so I know how to fix that. So let's go and open our zombie one. And we want to add in a rigid body 2D onto it. And same for our second zombie. Let's go and add in a rigid body 2D. And I think they, what else was it? I think it was a TNT block, maybe? So that our, our, our zombie should fall down, which it does. And our TNT block. So let's go and add an original body to our TNT. Original body 2D. And let's go and play that. So let's just launch this and see what that looks like. So we've got okay. So our TNT blocks are still being destroyed. So let's see if we go and play our game and go straight to our scene view. Let's try that again. We're too late. So play the game. Go into our scene view. Okay, I think I know. So let's see on our TNT blocks. They do have it. They do have a, a collider on them. Yeah, they do. Okay, that's inter interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we collide with our uh, uh, what's it called? Our zombie. If we can reach it, let us see if it gets destroyed. When it eventually loads, so we'll launch this this guy high. So hopefully we don't go over it, which we do. 
That's a bit too high. So maybe like that, maybe. I think that's a bit too high again. So let us just add some more force onto our uh, what is it? A sink shot, I think. So force, we'll go 15. We'll save that and we'll play our game again. And hopefully we can. Launch this guy. Okay, that's a bit too much again. So we need to make this. We guess this might take a while. So let's see. Hopefully that will be fine. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, we destroyed our zombie, which is working nicely. And we just need to figure out why our um, why our TNT blocks are not staying on in the scene. So let's see if we stay play the game and go into our scene view. So they're falling out of the scene. Which is a bit weird because nothing else is. So let's see. Box Collider, Rigid Body. Box Collider, Rigid Body. It's very weird. So if we open, let's say, open level 2. And yeah, so it has been added. So we need to try and figure out why that's happening. So let's maybe let's try and Google it. So let us say, uh, what are we going to say? Um, Unity object falling through floor. Let us see, is trigger will make the collider pass through other colliders, so you might make... Okay, so that's probably why. So if we go to our TNT block, and let's just, for now, let's just unselect is trigger, and we will probably see now that the... What's it called? The TNT blocks stay in the scene. So if we launch that, okay, so there, there are our TNT blocks. But okay, maybe that should be fine. Let's try and change on our explosion. Let's change this to on collision. Enter 2D. Collision 2D, collision. And then that should be fine. So who knows if that's even still going to work. But we'll try and see so for this we're going to need to change our level so let's change our level 2 we will just drag in our one TNT block over here just to see if it works and we'll go ahead and collide into it so let's collide into our TNT block okay so that still works so that's fine that's working nicely that's what we wanted and then we could also destroy our zombies, so that's fine, that's working perfectly fine. So now we just need to figure out why. Actually, no we don't, because we just fixed that. So let's go back to our game editor, and we'll load in our first, first level, which is at index 0. Then we shall see what that looks like. And then I think that should be it for this episode. So we'll play that, hopefully our first level, okay so everything is loading perfectly fine as you can see and our TNT block gets destroyed. So that's fine, that's working nicely, I still don't like these animations, we might just get rid of them but we'll see. Okay so I think we'll go ahead and save that, make sure our scripts are all saved, they are. We'll just have a look at our project plan again, so load in new levels when all zombies are destroyed. Okay, so we 
I haven't done that yet. But that's simple, all we need to do is just count at the start of the scene, or at the start of the game, we just count how many zombies are in the level, and then we just keep in the update function, we'll just keep an eye out and see how many are left. Whenever there's zero, we will just go ahead and destroy the first level and add in the next one. So we'll go ahead and do that quickly in the next episode, because this one's getting quite long. And, um, and then, after that, we just need to work on getting our camera to move back to our slingshot whenever you have finished um, destroying objects with the first skull that you uh, slingshot so that you can keep going and I think we're going to have a limit of three maybe three around so we'll try and get that working properly but I think um, let's have a look here I think for now let's go ahead and commit that to github so we'll open up github uh, we don't need this guy, so we'll delete that, delete that, and then what do we do today? No new levels and explosions, so copy that into there. Fixed. Oh, explosion. Explosion, animation. Where's it gone? Explosion. Animations and added in a new level to the game. So we'll go ahead and commit that. We will send that off to GitHub. So we'll push that to our origin. So that's cool. So hopefully, hopefully we're getting to the end of the series. So hopefully we'll only have maybe two more episodes, maybe three more. So we'll say an eight part series in total but we'll see you never know things might we might run into some more pro uh, some more issues and we'll have to fix them in different episodes but we will see and also from this week at or from this monday the 16th of may we're going to be starting a new series every monday wednesday and friday is going to be a how-to guide so instead of uh, uploading a game series or a game episode i'm going to be uploading like a little tutorial so it's going to be a short episode probably like 15 or 20 minutes long maybe um, that's going to be every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and the rest of the day so Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday there's going to be an episode in our game series so that's just something different to keep us motivated and not having to work on the same thing over and over again make it a bit more fun and also for you guys to learn some new things and also for me to learn some new things so I think that's it for today's episode so again thank you so much for watching if you enjoy these videos please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the videos and we will be starting a new game series soon I'm not sure what that game is going to be but we will try and make it something interesting and something fun but for now thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode which will be uploaded on Tuesday thank you bye